welcome to the last drop i am chris thank you for joining me today uh, i'm on a little gadabout but i've got a question for you how far do you go down the rabbit hole that is whiskey because i mean whiskey itself is a really really nice drink but you can go so far down like so far you can go into distilleries uh, where casks come from, what type of wood is being used? Uh, the makers, who are they? Who's the head of marketing? All those sort of things. Um, and this is the question, I want you to comment down below um, how far you've gone, how far you're into your journey and how far you think you're gonna go and how much you wanna go. How far do you wanna go in whiskey? There's so many questions with it, um, but yeah, come join me on this little little jaunt, and we'll um, have a little discussion on the way. So, apologies for the lighting, but uh, yeah, it's dark, <laughs> and it took a while to get it. So yeah, my journey so far has been what four or five years. It's taken a while. But um, I think I know where my place is in the whiskey world as such. Uh, I think, you know, I'm at a point where I'm looking maybe not for completely different flavors or anything like that and so forth. Um, but I'm looking for that moment which is not only good, but I can take a sip and... Ooh, fireworks somewhere um i can take a sip and actually understand what i'm drinking uh what flavors i'm trying to pick out and what and why i like it you know I, there's only i've got a few a few bottles on the shelf where i think for instance glen Tower 12 i can pick that glass up i know what i'm gonna get and i know that it's one of those close your eyes moments you probably can't see my eyes but it's like you drink my eye ah oh, so good you know that's that's what i'm looking for and that's how far i've tumbled down the rabbit hole of whiskey um but yeah i mean so many other people have, have fall further and further down you've got to look at other youtubers um that i know so vpf uh, roy from Aquavite, um ralphie you know they are They've tumbled so, so far down the rabbit hole that it's insane, properly insane, uh, how far they've tumbled uh, into the world. So they're looking at distillery numbers and all that sort of thing, you know. And for me, I, I, I find it interesting. I find that the science is really interesting. Um, so if you're aware, Dr. Don Livermore, um, who is the dis head distiller up at Corby, over in Canada, uh, he's done lo like a degree and a master's and everything like that on it, and he's really, really gone into it um, with all the chemical elements. I remember seeing a, a tasting with him uh, in Germany, uh, yeah, into whiskey, which is a really good show. Uh, if you're over in that area, go check it out. Um, and yeah, really interesting to understand the science. He's got this fabulous wheel that's really, really good as well. Uh, and you can, yeah, breaks down all the chemical elements. So, I mean, in theory, you could take a whiskey, chemically analyze it, I guess, and that should be all the, the flavors that are in there. So, uh, let's go. Cool. Train. Probably can't see it. But, yeah. Um, but, yeah, so that leads me on to where I am now, which is a place called Rope Tackle in Shoreham, which is just along the coast um, from Brighton. Uh, it's near Brighton City Airport, which actually is, is in Shoreham, uh, to be fair, but um, yeah, it's to see someone, so let's go and have a look. <laughs> Uh, my name is Dave Broom. I I write about booze, and I'm from Glasgow. You know, hey, God exists. Uh, so yeah, and I've been doing it for actually. Somebody asked me this yesterday. Uh, how long have you been in, in the booze trade? Oh, well, you know, from odd bins. 
I thought, Jesus, I'm 41 years, you know. I started when, you know, I wasn't actually allowed to drink, obviously, you know. But yeah, so, so I've, been, I've been rattling around the world of drink for, for quite a wee while. Uh, and I've been writing about whiskey, <coughs> sorry, uh, whiskey or spirits in general, uh, pretty much exclusively since 95, 96. <coughs> and things have changed enormously. Uh, in the world of spirits uh, in, those, in those years, which had a relatively small space of time when you consider spirits being made since like the late 15th century. What has happened in the, in the past decade has been absolutely quite extraordinary. Uh, one of the things I do on a, on a semi-regular basis is do things like training for bartenders. And I remember back in the, back in the 90s, uh, beginning, beginning of the century, uh, doing whiskey training for bartenders in London, and it really it was it was almost like chasing them down the road, going, just try the whiskey, you know? <laughs> they go, no, 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 we don't want that, we want vodka, except not in a Scottish accent, you know? Uh, it was tough. You know, it was really tough to sell whiskey. You know, you wouldn't have got a crowd like this uh, if you were saying there was a whiskey tasting back then. You know, so there were tough times because suddenly. As soon as something stops being illicit, people's kind of quality sense kicks in. <laughs> you, know? Yeah. you know, all of that, oh, it's, it's, it's horrible, but you know, it's illegal, you know? That, you know, kind of kicks in. You know, difficult to legalize stuff. <clears throat> but anyway, that whole smuggling thing, it's all romanticized, you know, the, these, these wonderful, you know, hairy men, you know, like this, ah, you know, in their kilts, with casks of whiskey, tied under the bellies of healing coos, you know, the big hairy coos, so you can't see, you can't see the, the whiskey, swinging underneath the cow, boom, driving down through the hills, through the glens, down, down, down to the market. Illicit distillation, ooh, fantastic. Look at the real history. Look at the real history. And you'll find that that illicit whiskey was made by people who had lived on that land for hundreds of years. The point here is that as soon as you pick up that glass, as soon as you pour that whiskey into the glass, it's yours. It's not mine. It's not the distilleries. It's yours. And you will make up your mind, if you like it or not, you will make up your mind what you think it tastes of, and you don't have to write 5,000 words on what that tasting experience is. It becomes yours. And that's a really, really important thing that the whiskey industry has to do. You pick up this glass of whiskey and you take a taste of it. Bam! You're somewhere else. You shut your eyes. You're somewhere else. Those flavours mean something. Those flavours will perhaps be reminding me of something. Maybe it's in your childhood. Maybe it's somewhere. Maybe it's a place. Maybe it's a person. Whatever. It's yours. And you're getting pictures in your mind. It has taken you from a place and put you in another one. So there you have it. It might be a bit windy and my ISO is crazy high. I mean, look at the lighting I have here. If I look up, you might be able to see me properly. But um, there you have it, Dave Broom. Um, he is so far down the rabbit hole of whiskey that I don't know what you say. He's treading water, probably at the bottom. Uh, for me, yeah, I'm not that far down the rabbit hole, but I think what I found tonight um, is that I'm deeper than I thought I was. A hell of a lot deeper. Um, Dave put a question out early, sort of relatively early in the, in the tasting stroke book reading stroke book launch whatever you want to call it and yeah I was yeah one of two people um, that sort of knew and um, the question was uh, anybody heard of Brora uh, now for me, like a lot of people maybe if you're watching now and um, Brora uh, is the original name sort of Klein Leashway 
um, of a Klein Leash whiskey, uh, what it used to be. Uh, I think Diageo are now gonna uh, redo it. Uh, they're definitely gonna bring it, bring it back, as far as I'm aware. But yeah, it, to be a one of only two people in a room of maybe 50 odd, I mean, was it was was pretty crazy to be honest. Um, so yeah, I, maybe I'm much further down the rabbit hole of whiskey than I thought I was, which is really interesting. Um, well, that's okay. That's not my train, so we're all right. Apologies for those people, train crew, and issues like that. So yeah, thanks for that announcement, Southern Rail. Brilliant. So there it is, an, an interesting evening. Um, some great drams. Um, Dave provided um, some very unique new whiskey. I thought that was a really interesting concept, um, especially to a room, maybe I'd argue were amateurs um, in the whiskey world, uh, enthusiasts like myself and the one other by the sounds of it. Because um, I think you hear a brewer uh, if you're an enthusiast, um, definitely along those lines. Uh, uh, but yeah, interesting to, to show them and show them what new distilleries, what new whiskies are coming about. I mean, the list was uh, we started off with Brooklyn, which I know is relatively old now, but it's still pretty new, really. So, local. Uh, Bear, bear, bear barley, um, really nice. Um, followed up with Thompson Brothers, um, their weird vatting of uh, Solera cup thingy, which is interesting and, and nicely sherry. That was really, really tasty. Really enjoyed that. Uh, followed up with a highball. No, what was that? Yeah, a highball next with the neck near and in. Um, so again, another new distillery. Then followed up with Rasse, another new distillery. Really, really nice again. And then finally topped off with uh, Arden and Merkin uh, standard release, um, which again, 46%. Uh, between that and the Thompson Brothers, um, definitely drams of the evening. So yeah, a really interesting lineup. I think a lot of people were surprised by the age, uh, by a lot of them and so forth. And that really showed as well. I, it was really, really interesting. Um, and I think being in that environment with those sort of those people, um, there was a good few questions like Welsh whiskey came up, uh, women as well. Becky Paskin came up um, with her Twitter campaign, but you know her push for equality uh, and women and so forth in the whiskey industry, especially in the UK. Um, is definitely prominent um, and, and great questions there but yeah yeah really interesting even yeah definitely I'm further down the rabbit hole than I thought I was which is so strange to me almost because I don't think I've scratched the surface but um, definitely a lot of the things that uh, Dave was talking about um, I knew of or knew already um, but yeah, I, I really want to get to Scotland and, and go and see some of these far-reaching distilleries. Maybe definitely Arden Merkin. Uh, he said Rasse is really, really good. Um, but yeah, I think Islay's must have must be on the list of places to go. I'll see if I can, I can see if I can get the missus to go to Islay. We'll, we'll we'll see. But um, yeah, really interesting. I mean, how far? Down the rabbit hole do you go of whiskey is the question, I think, uh, to, to what I'm asking you and to what I'm asking myself every day, every time I have a dram. Um, interesting from like the beginning in the evening to now. Obviously, I've had a few drinks, so maybe slightly tipsy. Um, but, you know, it, it definitely fl philosophical question about it. How far... Do you go down the rabbit hole of whiskey? Um, are you paddling at the bottom with Dave? Or are you just peering in the top? Who knows? Um, comment down below. Um, obviously hit that subscribe button, hit the thumbs up. I really would appreciate it. If you like this sort of video, I'm probably going to be doing something along these lines with Glasgow Whiskey.
uh, whiskey festival um, in a few weeks time um, and yeah but we'll go day by day with that I think um, which will be cool um, and my trains coming so yeah subscribe blah 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 that's the last drop